A lot of you who clicked on this video probably know what the Silmarils are and that Feyno created them. But what you don't know is why he created them in the first place, why he wanted to capture the light of the two trees in these three marvelous gems and eventually create his greatest work of all time. In this video we are going to cover the secret origin of the Silmarils. But before I'm going to explain to you the secret origin of the Silmarils, let's first of all take a look for those who are not so familiar with the history of the Silmarils what they actually are and how they shaped the entire first age of Middle Earth. They were created by Feanor during the years of the trees, where he captured the light of the two trees in these three gems. It was his greatest work of all the things that he created. They were so beautiful and magnificent that Varda, the Vela of Stars, hallowed them, so that no mortal or evil being could hold them without being burned and withered. In the book of the Silmarillion, they were described as Like the crystal of diamonds it appeared, and yet more strong than adamant, so that no violence could mar it or break it within the kingdom of Arda. Yet the crystal was to the Silmarils, but as is the body to the children of Iluvatar, the house of its inner fire, that is within it, and yet in all parts of it, and is its life. And the inner fire of the Silmarils, Feanor made of the blended light of the trees of Falinor, which lives in them yet, though the trees have long withered and shine no more. Therefore, even in the darkest of deepest treasury, the Silmarils of their own radiance shone like the stars of Farda, and yet, as were they indeed living things, they rejoiced in light and received it and gave it back in hues more marvelous than before. But I see you thinking, how could Feyno become such a great craftsman, such a great smith? Well, he was actually the greatest elven smith of all time. It was Aule himself, the fella who created the substances in the earth and loved all the works and crafts in the world of which he was the master. He teached the Noldor everything he knew about smithing and crafting and as you might see it coming, Feyno was his greatest student. It was from Aule himself that Feyno learned the craft to create the Silmarils, which we will cover in just a minute. These gems were beautiful to say the least and they were enchanting to look at. Melkor thought this too and wanted them for himself. He stole these gems after he destroyed the two trees together with an Orient. Feynor was furious and went with Renaldo to Milert trying to retrieve these gems. He was so furious that he killed other elves that stood in his way. The Noldor needed ships to sail from Valinor to Middle Earth, but the elves of Alqualondë wouldn't give their ships to them. So Feanor and a great part of the Noldor, which included his seven sons, attacked the elves and so started the first kinslaying. He spoke a terrible oath so that he himself and his sons would never stop searching and trying to retrieve the Silmarils that Melkor stole. No matter the cost, the oath was sworn in the name of Iluvatar, Manwë, Varda and the holy mountain of Taniquethil. They would hunt and kill all who stood between them and the Silmarils and that is what they did. A little bit later down the story when Feanor was mortally wounded by Gothmog, Lord of Balrogs and knew that Angband, which is settled under the high peaks of Thangorodrim, would never be overthrown by the Noldor, he still told his sons to avenge him and hold on to their oath. After reading this in the Silmarillion, I think that Feanor never was awarded Father of the Year. Telling your sons, letting them hold onto their oath, even you know in your heart, never could have happened. Oh, Feanor. So you see, these jewels were quite important for the entire first age. It was only at the end that Maedros and Maglor, the last remaining sons of Feanor, retrieved two of the three Silmarils after Morgoth was overthrown and they stole them from the Maya Aeonwe who took the remaining two Silmarils from Morgoth's crown. Because of all the evil deeds that Maedros and Maglor did, the Silmaril birds in their hands and eventually Maedros threw himself with the Silmaril into a fiery chasm and Maglor threw his Silmaril into the sea. But how did Feanor come to the idea of the creation of the Silmarils? Why did he think of capturing the light of the trees of Falinor into these three gems? To answer this riddle, I had to dig deep into the history of Galadriel and Celeborn, explained into the books of Unfinished Tales. Here in the book, it is said that Feanor asked for a single strand of hair from Galadriel, who back then also lived in Valinor, but she refused because she opposed Feanor. Feanor asked this three times, but Galadriel refused his request each time. But I see you thinking, what has Galadriel's hair to do with the creation of the Silmarils? Well, everything. 
It is said that the light of the two trees was captured in Galadriel's hair. That is why Gimli, when he first met her, was enchanted by her hair and found it more beautiful than all the gold in the world. Feanor felt the same about her hair as well, and that is why he asked her three times for a single strand of hair. It is believed that because Galadriel refused his request each time, that he came up with the idea of the Silmarils. Those beautiful gems who had the blended light of the two trees captured inside it. Just like the light that was captured inside Galadriel's hair. Why three gems is not really known. It could be because he asked it also three times to Galadriel so the number three was kinda stuck in his head. But it could also be just a coincidence. But Feanor was not the only one who asked for a strand of hair from Galadriel. All the way in the third age, Gimli asked the same question. But this time, Gimli got three strands of hair when he only asked for one. If you like to know more about this story and what the deeper meaning is behind it, then I highly suggest you click on the next video.